everyone, this is Andrew with Google Music Service coming at you with another video. Um, I hope you enjoyed the uh, last one from last week going over uh, over a uh, course to transpose and scri transcribe. Um, before we get started, go ahead and hit that like button. Uh, subscribe if you like content like this. And leave some in the comments to let me know what you guys think. Um, and what you guys would prefer prefer to see. Um, and once again, I base this off of what I wish somebody would have showed me when I was coming up as far as a beginning musician. Uh, this stuff wasn't out here. Uh, you kind of had to go buy the DVD and learn. Or just kind of just know how to pick out the notes. But I do this to have some out there for the, for the ones who are trying to develop more. The ones who don't really know where to go and a whole lot of times what's lacking is uh, your lack of knowledge so that's kind of why I do this so I wanted to go over a chord for the week today to be able to practice and to get into your repertoire as far as two hand chords go and the chord I'm wanting to go over is this one right here okay it's an A flat 7 sharp 5 sharp 9 so this is based off for the people who's already for people who's already playing don't really have a bass player and trying to get into that group of bass player. Um, this is based off this chord here, and it usually leads to the one chord. If it's on the six, it usually leads, the six can also lead to this, you know, or and on this chord here, the sharp five, uh, flat nine also. Okay. Now, if you don't have this chord memorized in all keys, you might want to just go ahead and practice it. Yeah, you get your metronome. I don't. Once again, I don't have one on the uh, on the computer here. I get. I need to go ahead and download one. I need to make that a part of my agenda. Let me go ahead and write write it down here. Okay, so if you don't have the basic chord in your playing, then you might kind of just want to be able to go ahead and just practice that first. Uh, I'm just going to go over this real quick here. Because my whole, my whole thing is be able, get, be able to go with chords or voices that you can use with a bass player. And a lot of times, well, depending on the bass player, you can't, you can't do this. You probably, you can probably get away with something like this up here, or something like this up here. But you know, the bass, when when you do that, you gotta know the bass note. You gotta be sure that the bass player is going here, or you know, going here. You gotta be sure that the bass player is going there, because if if, it, if it's not, if it, if he goes uh, somewhere here, or or you know, somewhere here or in the chord, in the chord, it's gonna, uh, it might clash. There's a great possibility that it might clash. You don't want that to happen. Uh, you want to be able to get that call back again to be able to play. So let me go let me continue to go through this here. Uh, A, uh, D. Now, there's a couple of ways to voice this chord. Um, the main way is this one here. Um, I don't use this one, to be honest, too often. I gotta get that in my repertoire. But I thought I would show you it because it's the it's the most simplest based off chord I I can think of sometimes. When I get uh. I don't know which one to go to. I go with this because I already know this chord here, and I think I think of it to myself as okay. Well, look, I gotta base the the triad off the seven. Okay. 
but I wanted to go over this one here. So basically what you have is this chord is really, when you think of it, it's really just an altered chord. Because if you were just going to put, if you, let's, let's throw out the seven, let's go to the basic form of this chord. Okay, so the basic form is it is one, three, sharp five. It's an altered chord. It's, it's really it's an augmented chord because anytime you sharp the five, they call it the augmented for that sharp five. Um, basically, what does jazzers and gospel do? We put that seven in there to give it a little bit more color. So in the jazz world, you have three. You have not well. Really, I know of two. I know of two main voices, basic voices. It's seven three five and three seven nine. Okay, so anytime you go and sharp the nine, you can always flat the nine. You can get away with that, and they won't crash. Okay, so now you got your chord here in the left hand. Okay. And it's D, A flat, D flat. And you want to build in your right hand a quarter chord. A quarter chord is built off of uh, uh, no so four. So what that means, if when I built this chord, so say if I started A flat, I go to the fourth of A flat, which is D flat. And I go to the fourth of D flat, which is G. I built my quarter chord off the dominant seven of this chord. Now, <clears throat> most of the time, this is used to give back, you know, to the to the one. If you use it on the six, it's used to go to the two. If you use it on the six, it used to go to the two. Um, it's um, it's also what's considered also the uh, tritone. Well, not necessarily try to sub, but another way to voice this chord, remember the 735 and 379? So another way to voice this chord is the 379 and still build your quarter chord off the 7. You can even bring it closer now. Three seven nine. Okay, so seven or seven three five and then, oh sorry, I yeah. Still put your quarter chord off the seven. Or seven three five. Still build your quarter chord off the seven. But this right here is called also called a tritone sub because it would you would just um in jazz you would do uh, That's a five one. You go to a dominant, to a five one is just ba this basic. But if you wanted to just say, you say I uh, did a uh, no. Okay. Now, if you wanted to go back, go back around, they would say do a try to a sub, and then just be basic. But that's where that, that's where that comes from, right there. I try to tone up. I, I didn't play so much gospel. I, got, I had to remember that myself. So this video is being transparent right now. Uh, I haven't I haven't really played with a jazz combo in, in a while. But but um <clears throat> when using this. It's usually it's used as a passive chord. It's never really just to really just meant to rest on. So you're not going to do do anything like that. you know that that's, that that doesn't that doesn't sound right. So, so it's used as a passing chord, and it's usually used on the six going uh, to the two in most cases um, 
Now, the big thing is transcription. Transcription. When doing this chord, you want to get to the point to where you can recognize the chord off the bat. So, a whole lot of times in transcribing, you know, I, I didn't grow up with the metronome. Um, I didn't even know how to use the metronome until like the second year of my plan. And so the metronome doesn't really benefit me that much because I find it easier just to uh, learn my keys. I find it easier. Now, don't get me wrong, I still use the metronome if it's, a diff if it's a definitely a, a difficult song and I ain't got time to really transcribe. But you, but you want to always be transcribing. Always, no, I'm sorry, transposing. You want to always be transposing. Um, a professional told me that transposing is a never-ending uh, it's a never-ending practice session. So he said, you're always learning your keys. You're always learning something new. So the basically, the best way, the best way to learn to uh, add to your vocabulary is to take the chord that you are unfamiliar with, or unfamiliar with, and put it in all keys. So I'm taking both voicings. I'm taking my seven three five, and I'm taking my three seven nine. So, let me do that with you real quick. Okay, so, it's E flat. It's A flat. It's D flat. It's F sharp. It's B. It's E. Again, how do I memorize this? I'm, I memorize this three seven nine and my quarter quarter bell off seven. When you'll notice when you start doing stuff like this, you'll come up with your own way to memorize this. The best way to be the be a great musician, if somebody calls out, you know, well, if somebody calls out a B flat, you know, B flat uh alter you can hit it right then and there many times just knowing my chords and the degrees of the scale has saved my butt so many times because I didn't have a transpose there and I did, and I could not transpose because I didn't know where the transpose is it's being transparent I didn't know where the transpose was so that's why I create stuff like this because I wish somebody would took me to the side and said hey Learn your keys. I know when you first start this out, it it, it, it is frustrating because you you know you, you you're you're dealing with some difficult things. But the reward is amazing. Okay, so let's go over the next uh, one I showed you, seven three five, and the coda chord. Okay, so in my hand I got seven three five, and the quarter chord, which is built off of the seven, and it's uh. This is the four, which is F sharp and B. So let's take that to the key. Take that to do the different scales. Sorry. Mess up. So there you go. Practice with, with the metronome and make sure you know like the back of your hand. This is greatly rewarding and this is a, this is a uh, chord that is man that is so used so many times. Uh, even in even in uh, uh, backing up a preacher, you know, uh, 
You know, it, it, it is used in so many scenarios. But if you get this court underneath your belt, that'll make you just that much better. So, practice this this week, and I'll come back to you with another video next week going over what else to transcribe to be, to be able to put in your vocabulary. Oh, and uh, if you like, if you want to see the next video, uh, hit the subscribe button. And if you like this video, hit the like button for me. And see you next week. I'm out.